Hey pilots, are you enjoying the Phoenix A320 as much as I am? There are so many great systems that are involved in this airplane, and I think one of the best is the electronic flight bag, you know, the iPad that's there on the left side of the cockpit. There are so many things you can do with it. So let's jump in the cockpit today and let's show you what you're missing out on if you're not using it. I'm Coaster Royalty for Royal Simulations, and this is Flight Sim for Dummies. Hello again, pilots, and welcome on to the flight deck now of the Phoenix A320. We are currently on uh, the Alvitalia Flight 287 with uh, service here from Rome over to Baro. And what we're going to be doing here for this tutorial today is uh, showing you a, an overview and uh, kind of a walkthrough of the wonderful, fantastic Phoenix Simulations electronic flight bag, um, the iPad that sits on the uh, left side of the uh, cockpit. And uh, we're going to do so by looking at all six of the icons that you can see here um, that is located on the screen. We're going to do all of those uh, piece by piece and give you guys a full walkthrough and what you guys can expect and what you guys will need to do with the electronic flight bag uh, to be successful with your flight. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, step number one. And we're going to start with the settings. We're going to start over here on the right side. We're going to actually go ahead and click the settings tab. That's going to bring up the settings, and we'll go through and see what all is inside of here. First thing you see is flight mode, and of course you want to turn flight mode on as you're getting ready to take off, just as the passengers in the back are told to turn off all of their uh, radio type equipment as well, just in case uh, it, you know that it doesn't affect the radios of the plane or the GPS systems of the plane. The next thing down you have is the brightness, and of course you can make the brighter and dimmer, uh, just like you can on a real iPad. Next, you'll want to have your SimBrief username, so it will take your username or your user ID. You can definitely go ahead and do that um, for the SimBrief username, and you'll want to do that as this entire plane is kind of integrated with SimBrief, um, and it will be a big advantage um, if you have signed up and you, that you get your flight plans from SimBrief. If you're not sure how to get your flight plans, you can see my video that I just did not too long ago um, on how to find and file um, a flight plan if you're trying to fly on VATSIM. Next is your Navigraph, and if you are lucky enough to have the Navigraph subscription, you have the Navigraph chart, you're able to connect that here. You'll notice mine says connected because I've already done this, uh, but you guys can go ahead and click on that. And you'll go through the steps that you normally would for any plane to get your charts connected, and that is a fantastic thing, which we will look at here in just a little bit as well. Then you've got your chart mode default to day and night, depending on when you're flying, and then Again, it says if you're looking for the sim settings, this is not the simulator settings that you're doing here. This is just for the actual electronic flight bag. So that is the settings, and we'll head over to step number two. All right, now there's two ways to get back to the home screen from the settings screen. You can come over and click the home button and that will take you back to the home screen just like you would on a real iPad. Or let's say that you just wanna to go to the next um, tab very quickly. You can go kind of mouse up to the top and you'll see those same icons appear at the top and you can go seamlessly back and forth from one to the other. For now, we'll go ahead and hit click the home screen and back to the home screen we go. And now we're going to come over and we're gonna get everything started. We're gonna start now with the Phoenix here for step number two. So we're gonna click on the actual Phoenix icon we're going to bring this up, and this is now where you're going to get your flight started. So you'll notice here it says tap to import from SimBrief. So you want to make sure that you have already filed your plan in, you know, that you found it, that you filed it, done whatever you need to do inside of SimBrief because this is going to connect directly to your SimBrief ID or your SimBrief account name, and it's going to import everything from that flight plan. Your, you know, your operational flight plan is going to come directly here in to the flight bag. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to click tap to import. All right, and you can see now, here we go. All right, we're on the ground. The first thing you see is this green 
uh, you know, oval type looking thing with minus 42 minutes. That means, right, that I need to be off the blocks and departed in the next 42 minutes. If not, the plane and my operations center um, will actually tell me that I'm late. And so you'll see that that will count down. Obviously, the departure, the arrival, um, you know, when you're supposed to be leaving and the estimated time that you're going to be arriving, all of that's done here in your flight overview. You want to come over here and click to the next side. This gives you the weather um, for both of your airports. This is fantastic, right? I mean, this is just amazing, something we have not seen to this extent um, in Microsoft Flight Sim. So we've got the departure. Obviously, we've got the METAR here. And so we've got the, the METAR here in Rome. We can hit the arrival. It's going to retrieve the METAR that's currently in Barrow. And then even if you have an alternate, which we do, all right, it's going to show you that as well. One really, really nice thing about this is if you guys like to fly on VATSIM, one of the things that will happen is this might be actually able to be shown. So if you're on the network, there might be ATIS for that specific airport that you're either going into or that you're departing from. Like you see right there, uh, it kind of came up. So if I were to click on that, you'll now see uh, that if we were to be flying on VATSIM right now, this is the DATIS uh, information for that airport. So you don't even have to go into your pilot client. You can actually get that information right here. I think that is absolutely awesome and something that really just makes it that much more immers immersive for those of us who like to fly on the network. And then the last uh, tab that you see here in uh, this section is the route. And so it gives you the route that you actually filed uh, with SimBrief, um, everything from the, you know, the SIDS and the stars and everything in between. You even go ahead and click on map and it will actually bring up a map of the route itself. All right. So you can actually see where you're going on a very large map. And that's only the start of the Phoenix tab and application for the electronic flight bag. If you look at the bottom, there are one, two, three, four, five total tabs, and we've just now set up our flight here in the center sections. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here to the sim settings, and uh, this is probably a place that you're going to want to start as well, as this will allow you to do a couple things. I want to take your attention up here to the top. You can actually use the airline settings that you're currently flying. So if you have downloaded the livery, um, say, Alitalia, like I have here, um, you can actually click on that button and it will put in the user airlines, or excuse me, the airline settings um, for that specific airline. So that's really cool if you're doing it real life and real life ops for that specific company. But you're also have the ability to manually do any of the settings that you would like to do as well. So like, for example, you can change some things in your airframe, like metric standby altimeters and things of that nature. You can modify your information that you want to for like auto TCAS, nav and go around, brake fans on, um, all of those different things. The cabin, you can have the cabin lights on, cabin visibility on or off as well. If you come down here to the controls, um, you can have your control position as the captor. You can go to the first officer. You can have a disc tiller for your steering. Um, and you can have your jetway come in and out automatically when you park and when you're loading your passengers. Um, same thing with the auto door simulation. You can make that manual as well if you'd like to do so. One of my favorite things is the RA callouts. Everyone that uh, I know that flies likes to do different things. I like to have almost all of mine on, um, but some people are different, obviously. So you can change when uh, the FO or the computer system will call out the uh, altitude that you're currently at. And then, of course, you're able to change your um, units to, to meters to feet, if you'd like, HPA to inches, and, of course, kilograms to pounds. Of course, I'm flying here in Europe, so everything is on the distance um, and the metric system. So I would actually change that to feet. But I like to use kilograms even in the United States when I'm flying just because I've gotten used to it. So, again, that's completely preferential to you and what you guys like to have. When you're done, you're going to want to hit the Save Default button. You'll notice it says that the config is saved, so that means the next time you come into this plane, this configuration should pop up all right, when you are ready to fly. The next thing that you're going to want to do is come down to Panel States, and you want to make sure that if you want to come in every single time to a cold and dark plane, that you have that on as your default. You can have it turned around with the APU connected, turned around with the PCA connected, or you can have it ready to fly um, when you come in. That's completely up to you. These are the four states that you can have your plane uh, come into when you load into the simulator. 
And now probably the most important pieces of this, and we take a look down here, uh, we'll start with the mass and balance. This is where you're going to um, load your plane. And you'll notice that I've already done this. And um, But what you're going to do is you'll have the ability to send your load sheet. This is going to send it to your to your FMS. And so if you do that, you will send it to the ACARS. You'll notice that it's been sent to the ACARS. It's sent to your operations system. And they're going to come back with a message to you to let you know that that looks okay. All right, which is really, really cool. There's not been a plane that's done that here on Microsoft Flight Sim. Here where it says aircraft loaded, it's actually going to say um, load the aircraft. And it'll actually start counting them down. And you'll have three options. You'll have the option to do it fast. You'll have the option to do it uh, instant, and you'll have the option to do it real time. Uh, real time takes around 22 to 25 minutes. I think the fast time is nine minutes. Um, and then, of course, you can do it instant. Um, and that, of course, is, you know, making sure that all your passengers get on there. What I think is awesome, it even shows you a list of who all is on your flight. So you've got real names, first and last, what seat they're in what class they're in, what status they are in regards to a gold status member, silver status member. Uh, this person's with an infant, for example, here. So it even gives you all that information, which I think is really, really awesome. So um, that's just kind of more of that immersion stuff that we've been talking about. And uh, that, of course, is your load sheet. And that's going to kind of calculate everything uh, with your, you know, your gross weight, your zero fuel weight, all of those things that you need for your weights and balances for the plane. From there, if we take a look at the ground services and the last piece that we're going to look at here today, this is where you can talk to the ground. And so obviously you can come up here and connect the GPU and disconnect the GPU. You can connect the PCA, the air conditioning unit. Uh, you can put the chalks and cones out. You can pull out the stairs if you need to. So if you're not using a jetway and you need to use the stairs, you can do that at the forward and the aft. And these are the doors here below. We've got the left and right doors, all right, the back doors on the left and right. And we've also got the forward cargo, aft cargo, and the bulk uh, doors you can open up as well. You've got the evacuation door here too, just in case there's an emergency that you need to use the evacuation slide and the evacuation doors. And then, of course, down here you've got your pushback, and you'll be able to utilize this when you're ready for pushback. If you need to learn how to start the plane up from the cold and dark state, you can check my video out that, we've, that I just released um, yesterday. And for those of you... Um, Looking for more information on the Phoenix, uh, continue to uh, stay tuned to this channel and uh, make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button as we're going to have more and more content with the A320 here in the future on Flight Sim for Dummies. All right, and now for step number three, or I should say tab number three, we're going to take a look here at the pilot brief. We're going to click on the pilot hat, and uh, we're going to go into the pilot brief. We're going to bring that up. And what's great about this is it's going to give you your operational flight plan right here in the iPad. So all you have to do is, once again, click here to import your latest SIM brief um, operational flight plan, and it's going to come up. So instead of having to go back and forth, or maybe you don't have um, access to another monitor, this is a great thing to have because everything that you need uh, is actually here for you, which is absolutely fantastic. So you can go all the way down through everything that would be in the flight plan that you would normally see um, in your OFP that you get your information from. It is located here for you. So it is absolutely fantastic. And I think one of the greatest things that this allows for those of us who don't want to have to go back and forth or maybe don't have access to three or four monitors to put all these things everywhere that you need, this just makes it that much more immersive so that you're just in the cockpit flying like you would in real life. And now we'll take a look at the fourth application that you find here on the electronic flight bag, and that is the departure perf uh, page, and probably one of the most important ones. And I'm going to take a look at this. We'll, we'll go through everything um, real quick. So uh, one of the things that you're going to have to do, obviously, is get, re get yourself ready with the numbers, right, to do your calculations. So you want to have your takeoff speeds and, and all of those things. Well, in a lot of, you know, the airplanes that we fly on um, Microsoft Flight Sim, we don't really have this type of thing for us. And to be honest, we don't have a lot of it uh, in the, you know, 
um, X plane either, uh, except for you know we have things like the Tolus, for example, with the A three twenty eight and the A three twenty one. So if we go up here, we'll kind of look at this from the top to the bottom. Uh, you're going to want to put in the iCal code. Now, normally what you could do is go ahead and just in, you know sync your load sheet. Um, and doing that will give you preliminary numbers, and we'll come back to that here uh, in a little bit. But obviously, you want to make sure that you put in all right, everything of where you're going, and then obviously the runway that you're going to be taking. So let's say that you're taking you know, 16 left. Is it dry? Is it wet outside? All this stuff matters for your actual V-speeds that you're going to want. So uh, again, you want to make sure what your flat configuration is. If you're doing one plus flex, if you're going to be f uh, doing toga, uh, take off, or if you're not, if you're going to use flex, if you're using flex here, you probably won't be using toga here. Are you going to have your anti ice on? Or are you going to have it off? Are you going to have your air conditioning packs on? Or are you going to have it off? Obviously, this is the numbers that you currently have. Obviously, that will you know change once you put the people on the plane. So as of right now, these numbers are not correct. You want to do your numbers, obviously, um, once you've got your, your fuel boarded, you've got your cargo boarded, and you've got your passengers boarded. You'll want to do all of this stuff on this PERF page once all of that has been taken place. Another great thing is you can go ahead and sync the live weather. That's going to bring the METAR directly in, all right? And so that way you can go ahead and have this information in there that you need as well, okay? So you do all of that, all right? And you look down here to make sure that everything's correct and everything is the way that it's supposed to be, and then you hit the Calculate button. And what will happen is once you calculate, it will actually come up over here on the right side with everything that you need, you'll notice that this is all the information that you need to go into the perf section of the MCDU, right? So you know you've got to put the v V1, V rotate speeds, and your V2 speeds, all right? You've got to put your transition altitude. Now, I, it hasn't done that because I've not done anything in the McDo yet, um, so this plane doesn't even know where I'm going. But your transition altitude would be there. It's, how many, it's what your flaps are going to be set to, what your THS is going to be up to. You're going to be putting up, all right, forward slash 0 0.2, okay, right there. Um, and then your flex to temps, you're going to put the 68 in there, and that's what temperature you're going to be taking off at in regards to all right, your engines um, and them revving up. So that's kind of very important to have this because now you can you know make it, take it as serious as you want. Like this is real life calculations. So I think this is just fantastic. Again, I am blown away at the amount of things that we can do in this EFB, and I am sure that it's only going to get better coming soon. And now we're going to take a look at the arrival perf. So we've got, we just took a look at the departure perf. Now we're going to do the arrival perf application here inside of the Phoenix A uh, EFB. And this is obviously going to be used when it's time for your approach. And so as you're doing your approach um, configuration, you're getting all ready to go. Once you know exactly what runway um, you're going to be landing on, you're going to want to put the airport code in. And again, it will do this automatically once you have everything all right, set up. So let's say that you're actually flying into Rome. Okay, and then so you're going to tell it what, you know, what runway you're going to be landing on. You're going to talk then about what are the conditions like at the runway um, at, the, at the airport. Is it dry? Is it is it wet and poor? Are the conditions bad? Is it very bad visibility? So you're going to want to decide one through six here uh, what the conditions are of the current runway. And again, you'll get that information from the METAR. Um, and maybe even if you're online, you might even find it in the ATIS information for that specific airport. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to uh, refresh the METAR there and apply it. It'll put it in there automatically for you. And then you're going to put down what landing weight is. Of course, you'll find that in your operational flight plan. All right. So you might be, you know, something like 61 points. Eight, okay, or something like that. That's a little much, obviously, but um, you know, you're going to put that in there. Then you're going to talk about: Are you going to use medium brakes? Are you going to use low brake brakes? Are you going to use manual brakes, max? And then, are you going to use thrusters or not? You're going to do max reversers. You're going to do idle with no reverse. All right, you'll make your decision there. And then, are you going to manually land it? Are you going to auto land it? You're going to do all of these things here in your configuration on what you what your plan is for actually landing the plane. And then from there. What you'll do is it'll come up here, okay, and it will let you know whether or not you're you're legal to be able to land, okay? Now, we're not up in the air, so it's not going to do this. You actually have to be up in the air for this to actually calculate. 
Um, but what will happen is it's going to show you in a diagram here on the runway to the right whether or not you are actually legal to land based on the amount of runway that you have at that specific airport. So that's a great thing to have as well. So that way if you're coming into an airport where you may not be sure if you can land there because you don't have enough room or it's a short runway or maybe you're very, very heavy and you're going to need a long rollout uh, for your landing. These are all things you have to take into consideration when it comes to landing at specific airports. And this is a great tool to have inside of the electronic flight bag. All right, so those are the five main applications that I wanted to show you here today. We're going to come back and show you the Navigraph charts just for those of you who have the ability to do that, and then we'll wrap this show up with that here in just a couple minutes. And so now, as promised, we'll take a look at the Navigraph application, and I think this is just absolutely amazing what they've been able to do here. We see this a lot in many of the different uh, planes that we fly. Um, you know, Navigraph has put themselves in things like the BAE and the obviously the uh, the fly-by-wire A320. Um, you know, they're, they're in quite a few different ones that, that we can utilize, even the CJ4, for example. But none have been as what I would consider immersive as this one. I mean, it is absolutely fantastic, I think. Um, and obviously, you guys can see here that uh, I have not um, <laughs> made my... Well, no, the, cur the current cycle is right now. I couldn't remember if I had actually done my Navigraph update or not. But uh, first thing you're going to want to do for those of you who have access, once you have all of this synced up and you have... Um, you know, Navigraph accepted that you have the plane and the, that, the, you know, that you're connected to their charts. What is great is you can go ahead and import your route from SimBrief here as well. You can't do this on every single one of the planes that we have the ability to do charts. A lot of times you have to put in the information yourself. Um, but what's great is that you're able to do that here with this import route. So you go ahead and do that and it go ahead goes ahead and puts everything in there for you, right? So you already got your departure runway. And what's great is you can come down to the ground charts. You can kind of find, you know, your airport chart that you know you're going to look at right here. And there's two ways, right? You can pull it up. And what we'll do is you'll see it right there. And there is our blue plane on the ground, right? And you can also go ahead and put a star on it because that's like putting it in the clipboard. So now you, everything that's starred that you use for that specific flight, you can have all, all right, in one little section. One thing that I have to tell you guys that I absolutely love is you can move it around as long as you have the, the pointer button here. Obviously, you can zoom in and out. But another great thing is let's say that you you know want just a quick access to something or you got to realize, okay, I need to go this way or I need to go that way um, while you're taxiing or whatever it might be. You can actually click on the writing utensil and then you can, you know, draw on the actual map itself, right? So you can change the color. So let's say that, you know, I, I know that I'm going to be taxing um, out here to runway 25, right? So I know that I'm going to be like going this way. And so that might help me, you know, just quickly realize, okay, that's the direction that I think I might be going or what ATC is probably going to tell me, all right? And then, you know, I have that in my head what's going on. And then if I just wanted to get rid of it real quick, I just hit the trash can button there and it goes away. So that is absolutely fantastic. You'll have access to all your charts here. Um, and it's really, you know, it's real quick, just back and forth. Um, with that uh, when it comes to your Navigraph. And, of course, those of us who fly with Navigraph, um, it's like a lifesaver, especially when you're trying to do a lot of different things at once. And it's a lifesaver, too, uh, considering you're trying to fly an airliner. Most of the time you're doing it by yourself with one person and remembering that airliners usually have two captains or maybe even more um, on board. So this is a great tool to have and just another piece of a fantastic electronic flight bag from Phoenix. As you can see, there are so many things inside of the electronic flight bag for the Phoenix A320 that will help you with your flight. That's going to wrap up this episode of Flight Sim for Dummies. We hope you enjoyed this, and if it helped you at all, leave a comment down below in the comments, and of course, make sure you click that subscribe button, smash that like button, and uh, that way you'll know when we have more content for you in the Flight Sim world. Once again, I'm Coaster Royalty for Royal Simulations, and you've been watching Flight Sim for Dummies. Until next time, 
Happy skies and happy flying.